the Uganda People's Defense Forces plans to exponentially rise the salaries and retirement benefits of its senior officers, capping a busy week of major events where the two upper echelons of the Army, the High Command and Army Council, met at Entebbe State House this week on Wednesday and Thursday respectively. Section 15 of the UPDF Act establishes the High Command, which consists of the President, who is the Chairperson, the Defense Minister, members of the NRA Historical High Command, and the Chief of Defense Forces. The other members of the High Command are the Deputy Chief of Defense Forces, all service commanders, the Chief of Staff, all service Chief of Staff, all Chiefs of the Services of the Defense Forces, Division Commanders, amongst others. The members of the historic High Command are President Yuri Museveni, General Salim Saleh, General Eli Tumwine, General David Sejusa, Major General Matayo Charlie Gonza, the late Fred Rijema, the late Tadeo Kanyankore, and the late Area Kategai. Amongst the roles of the High Command is to advise the President in emergency situations and on matters relating to national security or deployment of the defense forces and to advise the president when Uganda is at war. Section 14 of the UPDF Act establishes the Defense Forces Council. It includes members of the high command, persons who are senior army officers on the 26th January 1986, all directors of services, commanding officers of brigades and battalions, and officers commanding equivalent units of the defense forces. Highly placed sources reveal that during the two meetings chaired by the commander-in-chief, General Yoeri Museveni, it was agreed that the first beneficiaries of the pay rise and retirement benefits will be high-ranking officers from the rank of general to major, whose increments are catered for in this financial year defense ministry vote. Amongst the first category of beneficiaries are senior army officers from the rank of general to brigadier set to retire from the army on July 31st, 2022. They will receive an increment of 100% for their retirement benefits, while colonels to majors, while colonels, lieutenant colonels and majors will receive a 50% increment of their retirement benefits. The new structure places the salary of a general at 15 million shillings, lieutenant general at 13 million shillings, major general at 12 million shillings, a brigadier at 10 million shillings, a colonel at 8 million shillings, a lieutenant colonel at 5 million shillings, and a major at 2.5 million shillings. Officers at the rank of captain and below including those retiring, will receive their increment in the next financial year, a highly placed source revealed. Sources attributed the pay raise to persistent calls by the commander land forces, General Mohozika in Erugaba, to improve the welfare of the army. And I quote, I will not command poor soldiers, close quotes, Mohozi is quoted saying, The big tent policy may be an attempt to placate retiring army officers, especially those who have spent years without deployment. Um, it's a culmination of what had been like growing tensions and a sense of disquiet in the army. At least 34 generals are set to retire from the UPDF in July if they are given the green light and meet the stringent terms set by the Army's Commissions and Promotion Board. The list includes two officers at the rank of general, three at the rank of lieutenant generals, ten at the rank of major general, and 19 brigadiers. Two members of the historical NRA High Command, including General Eli Tumwine, who was the NRA's first Army commander, and the former spy master and maverick, General David Sejusa, are amongst those seeking retirement. Sejusa first attempted to leave the army in 1996, barely after testifying before the Defense and Internal Affairs House Committee, where he accused the army leadership of being weak and corrupt, which had engendered the LRA insurgency in northern Uganda. This set off a protracted legal contest where the Supreme Court delivered a judgment earlier on in 2002 
rejecting his retirement from the army. In February 2022, Sejusa's second attempt to leave the army was once again rejected when the Court of Appeal overturned a decision of the High Court, which had proffered that Sejusa had constructively been retired. Earlier on in 2013, while serving as the intelligence troubleshooter, Sejusa authored a dossier in which he asked then domestic spy master Brigadier Ronnie Balia to inquire into allegations that he, alongside other top government brass, perceived to be against the Mohosi project, which is a euphemism for an alleged scheme to propel the president's son to the presidency, had been marked for elimination. The letter rankled the establishment, which led to the closure of the Daily Monitor publications. Sejusa later fled to exile in the United Kingdom, and he returned in December 2014, after deal was negotiated. To earn his freedom, there was an unwritten rule that Sejusa was meant to desist from making controversial statements and keep away from the political pulpit. During the high command meeting, highly placed sources revealed that this was a watershed moment for the largest batch of high-ranking officers seeking to retire as the army moves from the hands of the old guard who fought an asymmetrical war of attrition in the trenches of Luero during the 1981-1986 Bush War to the post-gorilla ideological generation of young tax. With the Bush War liberation story difficult to curate to the young urban unemployed youths born after the Luero War. Then remember, many of today's generals are not just the old Maliamongos and uh, you know, Mustafa Dresses and the others of the Idi Amin army. These are generals who could well have been lawyers, bankers, corporate executives. These are people from some of the best secondary schools in Uganda. Many have done officer and staff training abroad. So they have the kind of outlook of your typical third world officer of countries like um, Egypt, you know, Pakistan, um, Thailand and whatnot. People who feel they're educated, they're the conscious of the country. And although they're supposed to be outside of politics, but when things are going wrong, they feel it's the moral right to stand up for the state. So that... The theater has shifted as the army attempts to recalibrate its image as an interventionist force within the volatile geopolitical arc of the Great Lakes. What I do is, it now takes us away from the old Fronasa NRA historical, you know, guerrilla phase of the history of the armed forces to the first part of the army that's almost fully uh, post-1986. If people like uh, the late Brigadier Nobo Mayombo had still been alive, he would now be one of the top-ranking officers, probably at the rank of Major General, Lieutenant General, who joined the uh, NRA in the latter stages of his guerrilla war, 1985, and months before they took power. So these would have been the youngest, what you'd call the youngest of the, you know, the, the educated uh, crop that joined the t at the tail end of the Luero War. And so now the majority of the officer corps, the majority of the new recruits are fully UPDF, if UPDF means the army, that's now the national force after 1986. The UPDF today is also facing a changing security landscape and new adversaries on the front of terrorism and the specter of insurrectionist movements driven by disillusioned urban youths. With the population of Uganda, most of which, forget the Luero War, most of Uganda's population does not even remember things of the 1990s like the CA elections or the first uh, general election under the 70s of 1996, before you mentioned Luero. So combining that with the population that doesn't remember the, 19, uh, the early 1990s to mid-1990s, forget the 80s, and the army that thinks so, in a certain sense, that sort of isolates people like President Museveni. He must speak to that population that we saw rallying around the NUP in the last general election, but also army officers who in a sense are from the same generation of this as this youth population who now believe in institutions. 
the chief of defense forces general wilson Mbadi, a graduate of the elite military academy at sandhurst sits at the apex of the army leadership and serves as the fulcrum between the old guard and young tax after he joined the guerrilla army in 1985 barely a year before NRA bands captured power. During the meetings, Mbadi gave an update on the recent UPDF recruitment exercise meant to swell the numbers of the army to deal with internal insurgencies, including wrestling in Karamoja. This is artillery. Mm. He also spoke about the successes and challenges of Operation Shuja in the DRC, though the commander, Major General Muhanga Kayanja, was absent. With a growing tide of flak from the DRC, the Ugandan army had initially announced that the UPDF deployment in the neighboring state would end on May 31st. However, it has been extended as the UPDF believes it has been quite successful in decimating the terror outfit allied democratic forces. However, critics prefer that Operation Shuja's trajectory has whipsawed from expectations of a quick victory to an intractable battle inside the unforgiving terrain and forested depths of the DRC that serve as sanctuaries for the ADF. This is captured in a report co-authored by two Congolese research institutes. The report titled Uganda's Operation Shuja in the DRC fighting the ADF or securing economic interests, is blunt in its expression of disapproval that the operation is the success that it has been made out to be. And I quote, It's clear the military operations are not the success they are portrayed to be in the Ugandan press. I close quote the report by the Congo Research Group at New York University and Ebuteli reads in part, it reads further, while the operation did succeed in creating isolated pockets of security, it has not managed to structurally weaken the ADF. The report also reveals the complex interplay fusing politics, violence, and the political economy as Uganda's farm dot services was awarded a 335 million US dollar contract to construct paved roads in Eastern DRC. The two meetings came on the heels of rancor within the army establishment. President Museveni recently halted the top military commanders, including his son, Lieutenant General Muhozi Kainerugaba, from commenting about security and foreign policy issues on social media platforms. The decision followed the meeting the commander-in-chief held with service chiefs in the southwestern Intungamo district, recently, days after Deputy Chief of Defense Forces, Lieutenant General Peter Elwelu, placed Uganda's military on standby class one. This is the highest level of combat readiness, and the order proscribes movement of troops and military equipment and requires commanders to conduct regular daily roll calls to establish whereabouts of soldiers and what they are doing.